In this Blender tutorial, I'm going to show you how to distribute objects on a plane using geometry nodes. And as well as doing this for a single object, I'll also show you how to do this with a collection of objects. And then I will also show you how to make it a bit random by making a random scale and a random size for each object. Now, if you'd like to purchase the project files for this tutorial, then you can get that over on my Gumroad store. I'll have the links in the description, and you also get access to the project files if you join my Patreon. And checking out my Gumroad store and my Patreon page are really great ways to help support my YouTube channel, so I do really appreciate it. So if you purchase the tutorial files, then you'll get this Blender file right here with the two finished results, and then you're also going to get this startup Blender file, and you can use this to follow along with the tutorial if you'd like to. So what I did for this scene here is I just added a plane and then I made it green to look like some stylized grass and then I also added in these low poly nature assets and this is from my low poly nature assets blender tutorial. If you'd like to watch that tutorial on how to create these assets I'll have a link in the description and a card right up there on the screen. And if you're wondering how I gave each clump of grass a random color what I did is I used the object info node in the material and then I used a color ramp to create some different colors and then put that into the principle. And I do have a short tutorial on how to use the object info node. If you'd like to check out that tutorial, again, I'll have a link in the video description. Now, one more thing before we get started with the tutorial, I wanted to thank this video's sponsor, Sketchfab. Huge thanks to this video's sponsor, Sketchfab. On Sketchfab, you can upload, buy, and sell 3D models and assets. My favorite feature of Sketchfab is that you can upload and preview your own 3D models in your browser. Sketchfab also has a 3D model store where you can purchase 3D models and assets. Check out Sketchfab with the link below. Now, as I talked about at the beginning of this video, if you purchase the project files, then you will get this startup Blender file and you can use this to follow along with the tutorial if you'd like to. So I have these six objects right here. I have three rocks and then I also have three clumps of grass. And then I also added in this plane right here. And then right over here, this is the 3D viewport. And then I split the window and I turned this to the geometry node editor. So I want to first select the plane and then I'm gonna click on new here and that is going to add geometry nodes to this plane. Now this first method here is just going to use one object. So right over here on the geometry nodes, I'm going to click on this and I'm going to rename it. And I'm going to rename this to grass single object. You can rename it to whatever you want. And then if I select this grass clump right here, this is the grass clump that I'm going to be putting on the plane. So just click back on the plane and then let's add in the first node. So I'm going to press shift A and I want to click on the search here. I just prefer to use the search and I'm going to search for for instance. And I want to add the instance on points node. So I'm going to click on the instance on points and I'm going to drop that right in here between the group input and the group output. Now when I do that, you can see that the plane disappears. And so we need to join the original geometry back up because when I'm putting the geometry through the instance on points, it's getting rid of that plane. So to join this geometry back up to the group output, I want to press shift A and I'm going to go to the search and I'm going to search for a join geometry. So let's click on the join geometry and I'm going to put that that right here and we're going to connect it in between the instance on points and the group output. So now what I can do is I can take the group input and I can put the geometry into the join geometry and that way it's going to take our actual plane geometry and it's going to add this back in to the group output and so that way we can actually see our plane. All right now if we click back on the instance on points node we haven't actually given it any data to instance. So what we need to do is we need to add in the object. So I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to search for the object info node and this object info node it's different from the shader object info node um, this is a little bit different this is basically just telling it what object we're going to use so just add in the object info node in the geometry nodes editor and then what we want to do is we want to select this object so you could just click right here and then find whichever one it is I'm going to click on it I can see that this one is grass 4 so if I click back on the plane I can go to the object info click on this and then I can select the grass 4 now what I could also do do is just click on the eyedropper and then click on that object. So now we have selected the grass for object. So I can now take the geometry, the geometry of this object, and I want to put that into the instance. So we're basically telling this node to instance this object. 
So I'm going to scale way out because you can see it's way too big. Um, so if you want to change the scale, the scale is right here. And also the rotation is right here. So I'm going to change the scale values all at the same time. So I'm going to click and hold and then drag my mouse down. And then I'm going to drag back and forth. And that way it's going to scale all the values at the same time. And then I'm also going to hold down the shift key as I drag back and forth. And that's going to make my movements more sensitive. So you can just drag it down pretty small. And then I can also click and drag down and then let go. And that way I can just change this to a value and then it's going to change it for all the values. So I'm just going to change this to a 0 0.02. I will just hit enter. So the scale is much better now and we can actually see what's going on. Now the problem with this is that it's instancing these on the vertices. So if I tab into edit mode you can see that we have four vertices and so on each vertex it is adding that object right there. And if I select everything in edit mode and then using the object context menu subdivide this you can see that now wherever there's a vertex that is where the object is going to be. So that is not what I want. I want it to be randomly all around this object. So I'm going to press Control Z. I don't want to subdivide that. I'm going to tab back into object mode. So to make the grass randomly all around the plane, we need to add a new node. So I'm going to press Shift A and I'm going to search for a distribute points on faces node. And we are going to drop this right in here between the group input and the instance on points. And this way it's going to do exactly what the node is called. It's going to distribute the points on the faces instead of the vertices. And now you can see that the grass is all just randomly around. And then I do need to make this a bit smaller. So I'm just going to change the scale maybe down to a 0 0.01 and that is much better. So we do have some more settings on the distribute points on faces. You can turn the density up and that is going to create more so if you want to create more grass you can turn that up and then also you can change the seed value right here and that is just going to give it a random seed so if you don't like where things are placed you can just change the random seed until it's somewhere where you like now on the distribute points on faces we have this setting here and we have random and poisson disk so if you just set it to random it's going to be completely random and that is fine if you want to do that but if you zoom in here you can see that some of the grass clumps are actually overlapping so if you like how that is you can just leave it but what i want to do is i want there to be a little bit of space in between all of these points and that way there isn't going to be any blades of grass which are overlapping so to do this i'm going to click on the random and i'm going to instead change it to poisson disk so we we can now use these settings to give a space in between all of the clumps of grass. So you can now start to turn up the distance min and you can see that as you do that it's going to start to add more and more space in between the blades of grass. And then you can also turn up the density max if you like to to add more density. Now this is actually way too big on the distance min because there's a lot of space there. So I'm going to make this much smaller. So I'm going to change this to a 0 0.003 and then the density max is way too big so I'm going to turn the density max much smaller. Now you can also change the density factor if you want to just control how much there is. So you can turn up the density max and then you can change the density factor if you want to change that. And then again we just have this random seed right here to change the seed. So this is looking pretty cool but it doesn't actually look that natural because you can see that each blade of grass is the exact same size and it's also the exact same rotation. And that really doesn't look very natural so I want to give each clump of grass a random rotation and a random scale. So to do that we are going to change these values right here. Now I want each clump of grass to have a different random rotation so I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to search for the random value node. So let's just drop the random value node right here and then I can plug the value into the scale. So we're going to do the scale first. Now on default it makes it way too big again so I'm going to turn the max way down and let's make that much smaller. So let's zoom in here now and make the max even smaller. So the max value that that is the biggest value that the grass clumps are allowed to be. So for something like this, I'm going to change the max to a 0 0.01. And then the minimum value, that is the minimum value that the grass blades can be. So what the random value is going to do is it's going to randomly pick numbers in between the minimum and the maximum, and then it's going to add that number to the scale for each clump of grass. So I'm just going to turn the minimum up to just a small amount. In this case, I think something like a 0 0.002 looks pretty good. And then for for the maximum I'm going to go with a 0 0.01. So now each clump of grass is randomly going to be a value in between these two values. 
and now that is looking much more organic and much more natural. Now I want to do the same exact thing for the rotation as well. So I'm going to select the random value node and I'll press shift D to duplicate it and I'll just drop it up here. I'm going to use a different random value node so that I can change the minimum and maximum. Now I can take the value and I can plug that into the rotation and then I can start to turn up the maximum value. Now the problem with this is that I want the grass to be pointed up and so I want it to be randomly rotated around on the Z axis. So I want it to be randomly rotated on this axis axis, the Z axis, but I don't want it to be randomly rotated on the Y or X because I want the grass to be pointed up. So what we need to do is we just need to tell this random value to only affect the Z value, but not affect the X and Y. So this is actually really easy to do. We're just going to press shift A and we're going to search for a combine XYZ. I'm going to drop the combine XYZ node right here, and then I can plug the vector into the rotation. If I unplug this, you can see there's an X, Y, and Z, and then right here on the combine XYZ, there is also a X, Y, and Z values. So this is sort of an extension, and so we're basically breaking up all the values into X, Y, and Z. So now on the random value, I can just plug this value into the Z value, and that way the random value node is only going to affect the Z values, but the X and the Y values, we can just leave that set to zero. And that way it will not rotate those values. So I can now just turn the max up and you can see that it's just going to randomly rotate each grass blade. And now that is looking much more random and much more organic. And that is it. So that is the first method. That is how you distribute one object onto a plane. All right. So now I'm going to duplicate this and create a different version, which is using the entire collection instead of just one object. So I'm going to take this right here. I'm going to take this plane and I'll press shift D to duplicate it. And I'm just going to bring it over here. And then I'm going to select this object right here. And I want to use the same data because the setup is pretty similar, but I just want to change it a little bit so that it's using a collection instead. So what I'm going to do right here is click on this little file icon right here, and that is going to duplicate the geometry nodes, but it'll still keep the same information. So you can now see that this is grass single object 001. So I'm just going to rename this now to grass collection. So this is going to be named grass collection. So we now have this geometry nodes. This is the grass single object. And then if I click on this one here, this is the grass collection, but it has the same data. So it looks exactly the same. So we can now just go ahead and change this geometry node setup. So the first thing I'm going to do is select the object info and delete that because we don't want it. Instead, I want to press shift A and I want to search for a collection info. So instead of using the object info, we're going to use the collection info. So now what we need to do is we need to add these objects into a collection. So if you don't already have them in a collection, I will show you how to do that. So what you need to do is just select all the objects. So just hold down the shift key and select all the objects. And then what you're going to do is you're going to press M and M is going to move the objects. So I want to move all these objects objects into a new collection. And I'm just going to call this new collection nature. And then you can click on OK. So now you can see right up here in the outliner, we have this nature collection and all of the nature objects are in that collection. So I can click back on the plane right here. And then if I click on the drop down, you can see it's going to show us all of our collections. So I want to choose the nature collection. So now what I want to do is I want to instance this instead of the object. So I'm going to take the geometry from the collection info and I can instance that. So I'm going to put the instance on the points. Now you can see that it's very, very small. If I zoom in there, you can see they're super small. So right over here on the scale, I'm just going to turn up the max on the random value, and that is going to make the scale bigger. So let's just turn up the max value and you can see now it's getting much bigger and just make it to a size big enough so that you can see it. All right, so something really weird is going on. And so what's happening is it's considering the entire collection sort of as if it's one object. So instead of it randomly placing each object, it's placing the entire collection as a whole. Because if I select one of these rocks and kind of move it, you can see that it's moving that and it's moving all of the collections as well. So instead of it placing these all together, I want it to place each object individually. So to do this, we need to click on the separate children, and that is going to separate all these objects. And then also what we need to do right over here on the instance points is we need to click on pick instance. And now you can see that it's randomly placing each object around, but it's still using all the objects in the collection. Now there is another problem here. You can see that a lot of these objects are going way out of the plane. And that is because these instance objects are not in the very center of the 3D scene. So what it's doing is it's considering the center of the object to be in the very center there. So if I actually brought these objects into the center of the scene there, into the center of the 
grid. You can see that now it's fixing that problem, but I don't want that to be in the very center. I want to bring these out here so that they're out of the way. And I don't want the objects to be instanced from the center of the 3D scene. I want them to instead to be instanced from the origin point. So if you look at these objects, you can see that if I select them, there is the origin point, that little orange dot there, that is the origin point, and so that is the center of the object. So this problem is really easy to fix. I'm just going to select the plane here, and then I need to click on Reset Children. And so it's not going to instance it from the center of the world. It's going to instead instance the object from the center of the object. Now the objects are way too big again, so right back over here on the instance points. On the scale here, we just need to turn the max down so that the max value is much smaller. So let's just make that much smaller. So I'm going to drag the max value down, and I'm also going to hold down the shift key to make my movements more sensitive. So I'm going to set my max value to a value of 0 0.015. And now you can see that it's all fixed, and it's randomly placing all these objects around. Now there's not very many of these, and so I want to add some more. So I'm just going to turn the density max up, and then also also on the distance min, I could turn that down a little bit. So I think I'll just turn that down to a 0 0.04 and that way you'll be able to see a little bit more of them. And let's turn the density max up as well so that there are more of those. And this is gonna be it for the tutorial. So that is how you instance a single object on a plane and also how you instance a collection on a plane. So thank you so much for watching this tutorial, and I hope you found the tutorial helpful. And again, if you'd like to help support me and my YouTube channel, then you can purchase the project files for this tutorial on my Gumroad store, and you also get access to it on my Patreon page. And I do also want to create more Geometry Node tutorials on my YouTube channel, so if you have any Geometry Node tutorial ideas, definitely let me know in the comments. I would like to know your Geometry Node tutorial requests. So that's going to be it for this video, so I hope this tutorial was helpful and thank you for watching.